Okay, folks, today I want to share with you all this 8-inch uh, two-way speaker system that I built many years ago. And I want to do that to encourage folks who are interested in getting into real hi-fi speaker systems, and perhaps they don't have the kind of money that is involved in some of the other systems on the other uh, videos that I've done so far. I did the 8-inch two-way active speaker system. That was quite a bit of money involved in that, maybe $1,500. The uh, truck speakers I built, those are active, but that's uh, also was quite a bit of money. Uh, these uh, for passive speakers are a really inexpensive way to go to get into high fidelity sound. And I have enjoyed these immensely for many years in their passive uh, uh, arrangement. And I'm going to go, I'm rebuilding them to active, so we'll talk about that. But let me talk about the passive speaker system first. Uh, starting with the box, I guess for uh, folks who want to start off more traditionally, you might build a pair of small satellite speakers and put a subwoofer on that, or the six and a half two-way speaker system I built for my nephew many years ago used a six and a half and a tweeter, and that he's complaining he needs a subwoofer for that system, but maybe that would be, I think that's a little bit more expensive. This is probably the cheapest way to go to get into a high fidelity sound, eight inch two-way. Now these are big boxes, and uh, so maybe they're kind of old school and everybody's doing small satellites, so maybe this is a uh, old school way to do it. But I think it's the least expensive way for folks wanting to just get into it. The challenge, though, is getting large boxes. You see how big this box is. It is, well, almost two feet tall and so forth. And it's uh, about 40 liters in uh, internal volume or, or about a one and a half cubic feet. So that's kind of big. And uh, so big boxes to put into a room, but the sound in these systems is really uh, uh, very, very pleasing for the listener. So, uh, and it's an 8-inch two ways. You only have two tweeters, two, mid, two base mid drivers, that's it, and a couple of crossovers for the passive system. So that, I, I don't know where you can buy boxes that are 40 liters in internal volume. Don't know where to get them. So that's why I kind of like to grab these old boxes and rebuild them. So this is, these are old AR speakers, uh, acoustic research out of Cambridge, Mass, my old stomping ground. And uh, they were well built at the time. And they had a tweeter, they had a mid-range driver, and they had a 10-inch bass driver, I think, in here, and a sealed system. And I told my nephew, that's not real high fidelity. If we go 8-inch 2A uh, with bass reflex with a port, boy, it'll be really, and it is. It, they sound wonderful. So uh, that's the idea. We start with these boxes. They had a lip here this edge here there was a lip here set in this panel in here sets in and all i've done is and and so there was a there was an insert here where you could put a grill in here and what i did is i cut the front face out along the edge here and removed that and now i have a little step and otherwise it's open and i built a new panel secured it in uh screwed it in with screws I painted it black. I need to probably paint these black or something. The idea was to put a, a, a grill over this, over the front of this. I don't like grills, so I didn't bother with that, but that would have been the original idea. And now I have a new face with MDF, medium density fiberboard, this material here. And now we can cut off a new arrangement for a base mid driver, a tweeter, and our port down here. And I've learned since this that you don't, you don't put ports up the front, you put them in the back of the box. I would do that. In the future, and I have done it with all my other newer systems, but uh, so that's as old school as way I used to do it. And in fact, I'm using this uh, uh, PVC pipe that's cut to a, just a couple of inches for the tuning, and I just cut a hole that's exactly the right size and include that in there. So uh, that's real old school way. I have these other ports that I buy now and use. But anyway, so that's the basic idea. Let me show you the box in the back just briefly. These are. Uh, I hope you can see that. I'll zoom in on that to show you. So I hope you can all, I hope you can all see this is a particle board with a hardwood laminate on it. And you can kind of almost see the laminate there. And then on the back, they did something really strange. They put a piece of plywood here. And you can see in the hole here where they had a, they had a cup. And you can see all the, well, you can't see it too well, but there you can see all the plies here. So that's not really great for a speaker box. They should have used all this particle board. New speaker boxes is using the medium density fiber board, the MDF, but this is no problem using this particle board. It's nice and heavy and very dense. But plywood in the back? No, no, no. So anyway, if you see here, this is a piece of hardwood. What I did is I mounted a piece of hardwood right across here on the inside. You see these little white spots where I drilled holes, put screws through to grab onto that piece of hardwood. 
just a thin three quarter inch piece of hardwood, maybe an inch tall or inch and a quarter tall. And I secured it to the back of that cabinet across this way with screws in here so that uh, it holds that plywood, all the plies of the plywood firmly together so they don't start to rattle over over the many years that this thing is going to work. So that's the idea. Uh, and then I had to fill the rest of the holes with a couple of pieces of, of uh, I also used some pieces, of small pieces of plywood there. It's what I, whatever I had. So anyway, that's the back. This you can kind of see what, what this cabinet is made of. And I'll, let me talk to you a little bit about speaker selection. This was going to be a budget project, so I wasn't spending a crazy money on drivers. I did find these um, Vifa base mid drivers. Uh, the criteria now is for an 8-inch 2A to have the uh, frequency response relatively flat all the way up to 2,000 cycles to cross it over to the tweeter. Some drivers, they start to fall apart above 1,000, so you got to make sure with your frequency response graph that you're getting a driver that will effectively uh, stretch the range well into 2000 so you can cross it to your tweeter. The other criteria just to mention is the tweeter has to have a resonant frequency that's the FS has to be something less than a thousand cycles. I don't remember what this one is maybe 700 or something like that but so it's got to be a low FS for the tweeter and a nice flat response above two which usually is the case with a tweeter but a mid-range driver base mid driver with a low with a low uh, FS itself to get nice bass and uh, but it must uh, the re frequency response must stretch well into 2,000 cycles to get it to to do 8 inch two way. So there's some magic to that. You have to carefully select the driver. I did carefully select these. They're not big money. This is a, a paper cone. It's a treated paper. It's got a treated treated uh, material on here. But it's nonetheless just a paper cone, rubber surround. It's got a very hefty magnet on the back, and a vented pole. So this is not a sneezy driver. This is a pretty nice driver here. Most importantly, this driver had a base reflex alignment offered for by the drive manufacturer that called for a 40-liter box with a tuned port, whatever the tuned port, it didn't really matter if it's two or three inches or whatever, but a tuned base reflex. And that's really the key to get nice base. And then with a good driver, you'll get good mid-range and a nice hard, I like hard dome tweeters. This is a, a metal dome tweeter, aluminum or something like that. I think it's aluminum dome. Not a lot of money for these. For any of these. So that's the drivers that I selected. Then since I went to Mattisound and got the drivers from them, they were able to build me a passive crossover. Well, they built the design. They helped me with the design using the, Sleep, the Leap software. So I have the, uh, and if you can see, all I did was take a piece of this uh, material. It's just uh, some, some thick card that has a bunch of holes for mounting stuff in that you put in the shop or something. And I just took a couple pieces of that, cut it square, mounted the pieces the crossover parts onto the board, uh, soldered them in together. I don't solder them together anymore, but anyway, and then I have a couple of holes in this card for mounting this, and I mounted this right in back, right in back here is where it was mounted. Now, I've taken them out because I'm going to go active, but I'll tell you about that. But that was the original system in any case. It's a second order, simple capacitor and coil across the tweeter in the mid the base mid. So that means second order, uh, 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 odd order network. So the tweeter's out of phase 180 degrees. We talked about tweeter uh, driver alignment and phasing and all that in another video you can look at. I call it driver alignment. Take a look at that video. Explains all that stuff. But uh, So anyway, very simple. Probably about $100 for all the parts for the crossover. Maybe a little bit more. And I don't think any more than $50 a piece for the drivers. So about $350. Bucks. Well, $50, $100, $200 for the other. 300, 350 max, max. And then we have some foam. You can see these egg, egg shell crate kind of foam stuff I put in here. I use carpet padding now, but this is what I had and what I was going to use 10 or 15 years ago. So that's what I did for internal uh, damping. I, I, I did the top and bottom, back and sides. And I didn't do anything on the front. No, no, no uh, insulation, no material on the front. Very simple design. I wanted to share that with you, what these drivers look like. Works wonderful. And now I'm going to tell you, Not A Life does laid that out design. And it only, of course, requires one amplifier, uh, one stereo amp for, for each channel. Uh, they work wonderful. I've been very, very happy with these for many years. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to convert this to an active system. So let me tell you about that.